Thank you everybody for uh, clicking on my link to watch my show. This is Watch Your Story by Emmanuel. Thank you. Yes. Yeah. Jesus, we just welcome you here, Jesus, and just may whatever we talk about glorify you and make you happy and help your kingdom. In, and in your name we pray, amen. 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 Uh, thank you everybody for uh, joining me once again. I'm your host, Emmanuel, and today I have a wonderful guest He's be and who's becoming a good friend, Sean. What is your last name, by the way? Mulholland. Mul yeah, I see. I that. Can't even say that. <laughs> yes. And for those who know, may not know him, he's a pastor. I don't know if he's a pastor, but for Worship Mob. He's a leader and founder of Worship I'm Learning Mob. to be a pastor. Learning to be a pastor. <laughs> but other than that, I directed and do a lot of the audio mixing and engineering and things like that. Okay. Yeah. So, and if we'll put links to their website, YouTube page, so you can go check them out. It's amazing. I'm always, I never, I don't think I've missed that many Fridays since I learned about them. But before we get into the worship mob side of things, mm -hmm. I like to talk about you. Mm. Yeah, like how was your childhood? Who was Sean when he was young? Wow. Okay. Well, Sean was a really skinny, um, nerdy guy mm -hmm. that really liked to create things. Um, I, I loved having friends, but for the most part, I was trying to make friends by creating cool things. <laughs> <laughs> and it was, yes, by creating things. So, so I often would try to come up with some invention or something or do something musical or anything like that. And that was kind of my, I think that felt like my way to um, seek approval by God and oh. by people. Mm -hmm. And so when I was young, I, I very much just thought you had to earn your so, value, earn mm -hmm. your, you know, earn people's uh, opinions and their, their graces towards you. Yeah. So, yeah. So, yeah. and I grew up on Se in Seattle, Washington area. Okay. And that yeah. kind of leads to my next question. You were brought yeah. up in a, in a church, you know, Christian, Christian home. home. Mm -hmm. Yeah, um, my we we went to church from a young age, and then my parents um, actually entered like a relationship with Jesus Christ mm -hmm. uh, when I was around ten years old. Okay, um, where it became more of a actual relationship of you mm -hmm. know Jesus is my savior, and I'm going to mm -hmm. do what I can to serve Him. Yeah, and after that, um, I actually um, was at a summer camp and. Mm -hmm. And I went from doing good things to please God to, mm -hmm. um, oh, God, I need to give you my whole life. Mm -hmm. And I want to give you my whole life because yeah. it is empty without you. Is, or is your parents a main, were they a main driving force in that discovery? Um, a little bit because they, they talked to me about this idea that we can have a personal relationship with God yeah. and with Jesus. So, mm -hmm. yeah, I would say that my parents kind of that that was kind of a new thought for me okay. more from more from God is out there and he wants you to do good things mm -hmm. and be a good person yeah. to like there's this relational daily relational aspect with mm -hmm. God and so how old were you when this happened um, so yeah I was about 10 when they uh, made a commitment to Christ and um, it was the, kind of the next three years mm -hmm. so between age 10 and 13 mm -hmm. that I really went from like oh that's a cool concept to mm -hmm. I you know I would love to mm -hmm. know God that way um, in eighth grade was kind of another level of like oh I can actually lay down my striving and mm -hmm. my and my effort mm -hmm. to earn God's love okay and, and I, he actually revealed to me mm -hmm. how um, everything that I tried to do was like, it was, it was trying to earn something that he'd already given. Okay. And that was really great, so. And this, so you coming into your teen years, does this develop as you go into high school? Oh yes. Or does it receive? So, so I remember in junior high and high school having a very, um, very much like literally Jesus is my best friend kind of approach. Ah. And, mm -hmm. and in, I had some other friends, but I was like, what Jesus did proves that he is any of our best friend. Okay. He literally gave his life, his mm -hmm. fullness for us mm -hmm. to be intimate with us and to be friends. Okay. Yeah. So as this is happening, what is, your, what is your future like? Have you thought about it? Or? Well, all through junior high and high school, I just was falling in love with music and creating music. Okay. Um, and 
and mostly during that time, I was getting really excited about some bands that were out there that were not doing anything for Jesus, but they were, you know, uh, back. So I, this was back in the 80s. Mm -hmm. And, you know, it was like bands like The Police and um, I'm trying to think of who all I was, <laughs> The Who. I mean, and some I'm of these bands that really, just really rock out or are super creative. Yeah. And I just was like, wow, there's so much creativity available in music. Mm -hmm. And I couldn't find a lot of it that was Christian or that yeah. was towards God or towards Jesus. And then, and then in the mid '80s, I started finding some of the ones that were like Petra and um, uh, who else uh, back then? Degarmo and Key and Russ Taff. And these are all '80s bands. <laughs> uh, and anyway, and I was like, ah, oh, these are creative and they're singing to God. Mm -hmm. And I was like, okay, yeah, like there can be artistry. Yeah and in worship, and they're going to be mm -hmm. artistry and in, in storytelling about mm -hmm. the goodness of God. Okay, so, wow, that's yeah. amazing. So did, did you want to be a music producer like with your life, or did you want to mm, I wanted to create music. I didn't know it would come in the form of uh, being like a sound engineer and actually oh. producing, um, you know, and mixing and all that mm -hmm. stuff um, at those early days. But I did, I did start, even in my mid-teens, I started actually like recording like to a four track back in the 80s and I put different levels and like mm -hmm. do do some this instrumental part and then a different instrumental part and a drum track or whatever. Hmm. So I started getting into very early, you know, very primitive forms of mixing even wow. in the late 80s. So um, yeah. as a sound engineer, did you work for a recording company? Or what no, actually uh, I went to college for electrical engineering and music, a double okay. major. Of course. Wow. Not not the combination, but double, and very they're very different in yeah. a lot of ways. And um, so and graduated from college in '95, mm -hmm. and I actually I had been in a, some bands in college and mm -hmm. enjoyed music, but but got trained to do um, engineering, and then got a job in engineering in '95, mm -hmm. and and was in that same um, job, uh, the same company for 20 years. Wow. And that whole time on the side, I was doing um, music. Mm -hmm. And then eventually I started this ministry, and you'll talk about that later, but I started this ministry um, mm -hmm. about 15 years into that job. So what was the, uh, so you in this great, because an electrical engineer, they pay well. Yes. What was the uh, switch to say, okay, I don't want to do this, I need to, yeah, well, um, the whole time I was in engineering, I knew that I was supposed to do something else in related to God and music. And um, so <clears throat> in the early years of my engineering job, I was in another, was in a band mm -hmm. with a bunch of people that were Christians, and we were trying to do the whole Christians in a secular band. Yeah. Did that for about seven years, and, and that's where I started learning production and, and mixing and all that. Yeah. Um, and then, and then it was very clear through through God and a few trusted friends that it was time for that season to end. Mm -hmm. And so, um, you know, but I was doing my engineering job during the day, so it was kind of. And I also got married in 1997, so okay. so I was doing kind of a juggling act of engineering, music, mm -hmm. and and it was kind of from a time perspective in this order, which was hard on my wife wow. because it yeah. was engineering 40 plus hours a week. Mm -hmm music 20 something plus hours a week and then Little. and then trying to say hey hun let's <laughs> let's let's do this this is these are both important and we need to have money so and we need to and i also need to fight for this thing god's showing me but mm -hmm. but that's hard on a young marriage yeah so um but she was patient and mm -hmm. we made it through that season mm -hmm. and but like and through through a lot of this it was like she was my priority, but the time made it look like other things were my priority. Yeah. And, and it just depends how we look at these things. Like, That's true. So anyway, um, yeah, I did that band um, for about seven years, and then I worked with a worship leader and his wife for about seven years and did wow. four albums with them. Mm -hmm. um, and then that's after that's when God gave me the idea for Worship Mob, okay. which was to involve a lot more musicians mm -hmm. um, and, and just see what happens when we bring different flavors together. Mm -hmm. And then also when we take time to, um, to see what Holy Spirit wants to speak. Okay. So if we're in a song or, or something, mm -hmm. we, we love to see where Holy Spirit leads in, okay. in, in a popular worship so song. Or whatever. For those who don't know Worship Mob, could you give them 
like a because that was like a very tiny experience. Mm -hmm. you could just just give like a more in depth. Yeah, sure. So it's different than yes. anything I've seen, and <laughs> I've been in the Christian world all my life. So there's two kind of parts to Worship Mob. One of them is that we started coming together weekly to meet with other believers from other churches and just have kind of a free open worship platform mm -hmm. where we take time and we just just go into where Holy Spirit leads and let it be two, three, four hours. Mm -hmm. So that's one, um, and we love to do that weekly and it's kind of a reset for getting us out of our flesh man and into the, you know, the spirit man that, that mm -hmm. Jesus um, so empowers. Like that's yeah. where, the, where there's so much. Mm -hmm. um, and so that's part of it is that weekly thing. But the other thing that started even in 2011 when Worship Up started was to capture uh, these very organic and real worship sessions with a bunch of people that have maybe just worshiping together for the first time. Mm -hmm. And then to kind of see what God creates in that. Mm -hmm. And then for me to go and produce and curate to mm -hmm. kind of clean up that experience mm -hmm. and then, and then um, and beautify it and work with some great video people and then share that on YouTube. Mm -hmm. So um, that started in 2011 with some very, um, um, at that time, affordable <laughs> video equipment and, <laughs> and some good audio, decent audio equipment. But, and then from then we've had fun just developing um, mm -hmm. the visual side as yeah. well as growing in the audio mm -hmm. side as well. And actually I forgot to ask this question, how did you, get the revelation to do something like this because I don't know because oh. I've never seen it seen yeah like seen this. something like this um, yeah so it mostly came from being in church and then also working on different worship teams and always feeling like the the worship was good but it was somewhat limited as far as um, as far as I felt like there was so much more that God wanted to do through worship, okay. but it felt like in that 25, 30 minutes of a worship set, mm -hmm. we could only get like a, a value meal yeah. worth of worship <laughs> versus something that was deeper, like a seven course meal of, mm -hmm. of really interacting with God. Mm -hmm. And so um, I would say that's a lot of the difference is that I started seeing, you know what, God, I want to go deeper mm -hmm. and I want to see what's deeper if we if we let go of a lot of the constraints mm -hmm. and in a lot of churches will do like a worship night once a month where they where they give an hour and a half two hours to worship and I was like I want to do this weekly in a more of a living room setting mm -hmm. and we started in a in a smaller living room you know but we could pack 30 people in and it would feel packed mm -hmm. you know and um, before we were in this place and so it was about a third the size of this room, maybe, or a fourth. Okay. Wow. And so that's kind of how, but, but what I saw is there's a lot, like, worship is a lot more powerful than we realize. Yeah. And I wanted to explore into that. Mm -hmm. Like, God, what is there? And, mm -hmm. and God, what can you show us and what can you bring to life if mm -hmm. we lean in to worship? And what have you learned about worship so far? Yeah, well... Um, about worship specifically, um, I've learned that there is a lot more there. Okay. I've learned that um, that God uncovers beautiful worlds of imagination and love mm -hmm. and connection with Him mm -hmm. and intimacy with Him through worship. Mm -hmm. And and even there, I mean, we've been doing this eight and a half years, and I feel like there's so much more. Yeah. And, and I think in, in heaven, we're going to get to enjoy all of that more. Yeah, 100%. But, but for now, it's, uh, yeah, for now, it's great to explore that yeah. and just know that, that we're going there. And then there's many other things I've learned mm -hmm. about how to do, uh, how worship works. Mm -hmm. but, um, but maybe that's part of a different question. Yeah. So yeah. let's step, because we're talking about the when you're talking about worship, mob, what we've talked about so far, that's the face value. That's the behind the behind the scenes that maybe not many people know. So how does a typical uh, night goes? How do you prepare for that and how? Oh, okay. How does that come? Like a place? worship night. Yeah, worship night. Yeah. Yeah, so what we do here, and I don't know that there is a prescription for this, but what we do here is we have a leadership meeting and prayer at, at about noon on Fridays or at 1. Mm -hmm. We do a prayer meeting, and then we also do a prayer at 6.30 before the night starts. Mm -hmm. A lot of times that can be interesting, and, and like the 6.30 prayer can be a little 
uh, you know, unscheduled or something. And like, so it can feel a little bit like we're all trying to pull together because it's a Friday night. Mm -hmm. But, um, but yeah, we're very intentional. And then most weeks we'll do a Monday night prayer as well Mm -hmm. so that our core group is connected and feeling aligned and, and, and actually listening to where God's leading. Mm-hmm. And that's been something that has been really valuable over the last couple of years is to have a, a meeting during the week for a lot of the main leaders, both musicians and, and other giftings, mm-hmm. um, and and take time to, to pray and, and to also yeah. exhort each other and call things out and, mm-hmm. and, and really seek God on mm-hmm. places for repentance, places for... Um, Thanksgiving and mm-hmm. celebration and things like that. So we okay. kind of lean into all those things. Mm-hmm. But when Worship Mob started, I was doing a full-time job. Yeah. So back then, we would I would just get home from work, grab a quick bite, and then we'd go and try to go into <laughs> to worship. Wow. Which which meant that there was a lot of uh, there was just a lot of thing. It was I, I don't know. It was it was a premature kind of thing where we could enjoy the worship, but it was difficult to grow as individuals Uh, other than being encouraged by mm -hmm. God and by spending time with him. Mm -hmm. um, I would say that it was hard to have lifestyles of, of, I would say just spiritual formation Mm -hmm. and growth where, where we're trusting God more, not just because we're having good vibes, Mm -hmm. but we're trusting him because we're learning what it means to submit to him. We're learning how to let go, uh, you know, learning how to, break off long time mm-hmm. sin issues and mm-hmm. we're learning how to let go of judgments we've had towards other people yeah. and and find forgiveness and, mm-hmm. and offer forgiveness and all that. Mm-hmm. So but that's been something that's really developed more strongly in the last three years. Here. Okay. How what was the what did God tell you or was it a, how did you come about quitting a full time job to doing this full time. Yeah, so that um starting about 5 years ago, I was had been about 20 years at my day job and um there had been three or four moments before that during my job where I was like God, is this where I pull the plug on this mm-hmm. and trust you and go into the calling that you have for me musically? And the other times, thankfully, I didn't feel like they were the right time yet. Mm-hmm. And um with this one, it wasn't that the finances were there. It was more that we had built with God. We had built something, and and at work it was there. It, it was just feeling like that season was needing to end, so that we could focus on listening to God and building this with Him, mm-hmm. rather than with my leftover energy after working a day job. Mm-hmm. So it was, and and not only that, but it was more a thing where my wife and our three daughters at the time, we got together and we had family meetings and said, hey, is it time to, is it time to move and move into this house, which is, we're in like the heart of the older part of Colorado Springs, which means there's a lot of homelessness, there's a lot of addiction in this area. Yeah. And, and a lot of brokenness um, mm-hmm. that Jesus wants to get into. And, um, but do we, do we, do we move out of this nice neighborhood into this area? Mm-hmm. Do we take the chance also then of unplugging from the the comfortable income mm-hmm. and depending on God? Yeah. And you know, and I think in making that choice that we we were able to listen and hear God on on a lot of it. And also I was I was a bit weary of mm-hmm. doing a, a a high stress day job and then trying to squeeze this thing that my heart felt called to into the, into the extra hours mm-hmm. and trying to have a healthy marriage at, <laughs> during that as well. So all those wow. things were just, um, mm-hmm. it felt like, and, and it was interesting because right then I was also looking into a possible career, not a career change, but a company change mm-hmm. to go work with Apple and move to actual actually Cupertino oh. in California. It was either that or unplug continu- completely and, and do wow. the worship ministry. So those, those were kind of the things I was looking at. Wow, a lot of decisions. Yeah. So now, looking back, obviously it's, a, it's growing and it's uh, producing a lot of fruit. Mm. What would you advise somebody, a younger person, wanting not necessarily to do something like this, mm-hmm. but live a, who have a full-time job and their heart is calling mm-hmm. them to do something for God? What yeah. would you... Well, I, I think... I think I went, like, even though in my 20s I was hoping to have a music career and be and be able to, like, 
tour and bless the world with music and all that. And in my 30s, I was even more like, oh, I got to make this happen. And I was trying to figure every way and working really hard. Um, I wouldn't trade having served a boss and and worked for someone else's vision mm -hmm. and having to come under that authority mm -hmm. and and do good work that benefits, you know, we get paid, but it really benefits an organization, it benefits people upstream from you, and it benefits a team. Mm -hmm. And um, I wouldn't have traded that because I, I think we, in our 20s, we know really what we're super excited about, mm -hmm. but we have no idea what we can handle long term. Mm -hmm. And what we, even when we think we know the thing that will make us happy, I've seen over and over in my life that it was the thing that didn't seem quite like what I wanted. Mm -hmm. That was the thing that God used to both grow me and create a sense of contentment in trusting Him. Mm -hmm. And so often I think um, we get a spark of an idea and, and we, we often as humans go one of two ways. We obsess over it and make it our value and our life goal and everything. Mm -hmm. And then whether it becomes successful or not, we end up having a having a lot of missing parts because mm -hmm. that idolatry creates a problem because we we're unable to like find god in that thing mm -hmm. even though we try to you know have god on the side yeah <laughs> or or if it fails then mm -hmm. we we can get angry and go god i was doing this and i wanted to do it for you but you didn't help it to be successful mm -hmm. or we learn that we don't have work ethic or we learn something yeah <laughs> and then we often try to compensate for that so that whole thing of like just chasing your dream that mm -hmm. that Hollywood promotes or that and even you know first world America promotes this go after your dream mm -hmm. um, what I've kind of seen is that uh, th if if any of what I thought my dream was would have come through the way I wanted there would have been a lot of opportunity and what I think a lot of follow through into other brokenness mm -hmm. that would have actually at this point in my life been stealing joy hmm. and made it so I like I felt like everything I cared about was behind me mm -hmm. but what I've seen is my 40s have been my most um, I feel like I've been the most um, committed to what God is trying to do okay. and and even in that my own ambition for worship mob to do this or that or the other mm -hmm. has had to be constantly like he's had to constantly say son mm -hmm. hold on or son be patient Okay. And and when you're in your 40s, you don't want to you don't you don't want to hear be patient. <laughs> yeah. You're like, you know, I'm gonna be 50. Like, what does this look like? But but really, I mean, there's a lifelong journey for each of us, and it's yeah. it's okay for us to spend years. For me, it was two decades mm -hmm. doing something that was was good, but wasn't what I really was passionate about. Yeah. And um, it paid the bills, but it didn't it didn't meet that deep heart desire I had to do something mm -hmm. musical and really to bless people and bless God through that. Yeah. Wow. So, cool. yeah. Wow. So, as we wrap up, what is a, give me one high and one low mm. of worship mob. Mm. So, I would say there's a lot of highs. Mm -hmm. um, um, one of the biggest ones has been uh, people learning to let themselves be loved by God mm. and to receive that and to do it on a regular basis mm -hmm. and to enter his presence with thanksgiving and feel truly thankful, not just trying yeah. to put on thankful thankfulness. Mm -hmm. So that's that's a recurring high mm -hmm. of um, of just me and and my family and people coming into this place and on our and then also watching our videos mm -hmm. and and believing that God loves them. Yeah. And that's so important to my heart because I believe that that is the place that starts all other good spiritual fruit. Yeah. Is actually believing that we're lovable and loved by him. Mm -hmm. And I know it's something that's talked about a lot, but there's nothing like a worship experience to yeah. encounter that love. Mm -hmm. um, Lowe's, I would say, one of the harder things has been um, just how many people that I end up 
loving mm -hmm. that come in and spend a season here mm -hmm. and then move on. I mm -hmm. think it's a lot like school yeah. teachers. School teachers have kids for a year, yeah. Yeah. then they have to let them go. Mm -hmm. and, and a lot of times it, they go for good reasons. Sometimes they go because they didn't like how something was handled. Mm -hmm. They didn't like you know something about our ministry or just something in their life got too burdensome. Mm -hmm. And so that's hard because sometimes the doors feel pretty solidly shut when mm -hmm. people move on. Yeah. And that's painful. Mm -hmm. um, but God's showing me, even in that, God is teaching me that, you know, this takes me back to junior high and high school when mm -hmm. Jesus was my best friend. Mm -hmm. And God's showing me that he, like he says, I will never leave nor forsake you. Yeah. Um, and, and one way for us to actually experience that is learning to transition, mm -hmm. learning to love well and release people well. Yeah. That's and true. and that's something I'm still learning. I, mm -hmm. I'm still not great at it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> We're all on um, a journey. Yes. So, yeah. so the people watching, yes. people who want to follow similar footsteps as you, yes. have a worship mob. Yes. Or often not call or it worship. worship team. Or worship team. Yeah. There are, there, we are okay with you calling it worship mob. There There's different go. worship mobs in different cities. Mm -hmm. and, and if you get inspired by this and want to follow something similar, please do. Okay. So remember, everybody, we all have a story. What's your story? Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for joining my show and listening to the interview that I just had. Come again next time when we have another amazing interview. And in the meantime, subscribe and follow me on social media so that you can keep in contact with me and see what I'm doing throughout the weeks that are coming up. Thank you.